Hey, welcome back. So in this video, I want to share with you six reasons why I think you should become an environmental engineer. And so this is just my personal opinion. This is just from my experience. I've been an environmental engineer for a whopping one year and one month right now. So I started back in 2019, March 2019. Right now it's April 2020. So again, it's only been like one year and one month. I know that's not that much experience compared to a lot of other people out there. But this is just my take. So this is my opinion as like a pretty much a recent grad who's only been working there for one year in the field. I don't have like years of experience and years of wisdom in this field, but this is just my take. And I know I have a lot more to learn in the future, but as of right now, I do want to share with you guys my early experience. That way you guys can get a feel as to whether or not this is really right for you. So the first reason why you should become an environmental engineer is because, well, the title, pretty much, you're an engineer. So in that title, it has the word environmental engineer. And then again, the engineer part is probably what's really important or what really stands out. So in Asian culture, being a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer, they're like in the same playing field. They're like in the same realm in terms of prestige. So just having that title, that engineer title, that's what really gives it emphasis. So if you're ever at like a family gathering or at a party, and you throw in like, oh, I'm a doctor, I'm a lawyer, I'm an engineer, people are going to look at you and be like, wow, this guy is probably really smart. He has that title, he has that prestige, he has that, that honor in a way. People are going to look at you differently and see you pretty highly. This could be more of like an ego thing. It doesn't really affect me so much just because I don't really care about what the title is. But overall, it makes you stand out. It makes you important. So again, it all depends on your personality. If you like that title and you like having that prestige, you like being looked up upon, then this is the job for you. The second reason is that it's a pretty high paying job. So again, you're in the same realm as being a doctor, a lawyer, as an engineer. You are within that realm of having a high paid salary. So as of right now, me, my numbers, I currently work in California. It is the year 2020. I am an environmental engineer. I make $78,500 in my current field at my current location. Right now I have like a master's degree in environmental engineering and I have the engineer and training certificate. I'm not a professional engineer. So pretty much those are my stats and I make $78,500. I don't know if that's a lot to you guys, but to me that is quite a lot for like a recent grad who just graduated 2018. Again, the amount of pay that you make depends on your field. So I know there's like civil engineers, there's mechanical engineers, there's computer engineers. They are all, they all have different salaries over there, but typically they have a pretty high paying salary. And again, because of that high prestige, they're typically known to have a high paying salary. Each field will have different paying salaries. So me and my salary of 78,000 as an environmental engineer, that's not as much as like a computer engineer at Google who would make like over a hundred thousand. So again, it all depends on your field, but typically as an engineer, you're typically guaranteed to have like a pretty decent or high paying salary, depending on your location and again, depending on your field. So typically the pay is pretty high no matter what kind of engineering field you're in. This is all my opinion and based off of what I'm given. The third reason is that I'm considered an essential worker. So as of right now, 2020, because of this whole pandemic that's happening right now, people are getting laid off and people have to work from home. As of right now, I am not laid off. And I don't foresee that I will be laid off in the future because of this whole pandemic, regardless, just because I am considered essential. So no, I am not on the front lines in terms of like being a healthcare worker and having to treat patients, but I am still considered essential just because I work for the government. And so the government still has to operate. You still need things like utilities. You still have to make sure that some functions are properly working and are still working just because as an environmental engineer, I have to make sure that they're not like contaminated or that things just still have to keep running smoothly for their facility to work. Because I work for the government, I have to make sure that the government can work. So without me working, then they cannot essentially work. So for example, like at a gas station, people still need to pump gas. It's like an essential requirement that people need to do. I, as an environmental engineer, I need to make sure that that gas station is still operational. I need to make sure that that gas station is still like following the guidelines of California, making sure that there's no leaks or anything just because if there's a leak, then there's a problem. The inspector's gonna show up, they get fined, that gas station shuts down. So again, I just have to make sure that there's no trouble with that gas station to make sure that it's operational. And so that's why I'm considered an essential worker. But that's just my field. So as an environmental engineer somewhere else, maybe at a private company, your compliance, they might have some other roles and functions. But with my experience, I'm considered essential. So you typically won't have to worry about getting laid off because of this pandemic or maybe in the future with 
some other clients that you go through. The fourth one, and this might coincide with the third one, is that it's a stable job. So as an environmental engineer, you can work for the private sector or the government sector. Right now I work for the government, so I guess I'm like considered a public sector. Again, because of this whole pandemic, I don't have to worry about being laid off just because I'm considered essential. It is a stable job to have. It's not too stressful either. So I have to be there to make sure that they can be there. I have to make sure that my work is okay, and that way the government's work is okay. That way they can keep operating. So that's why you don't have to worry too much about being laid off or anything, just because you're essential, you're important, you have to be there at work. As of right now, I'm working from home, but I still have to show up at my facility like at least once a week. I guess the trade-off for having a stable job is that maybe your pay might be smaller compared to like a computer engineer. And because of this pandemic, because you're a computer engineer and maybe your clients are like uh, tourist spots or, or for the entertainment industry, maybe they're closed right now, so you might have to worry more about being laid off just because of who your customers are. But because my customer, my client, because I work for the government, I don't have to worry too much about the government shutting down. The fifth reason why you should become an environmental engineer is because, well, for me, it's important because it tackles things like climate change. So for me, personally, I believe in climate change. I believe that the environment should be protected. I believe in sustainable practices. I believe in switching to renewable energies. And I believe that the next crisis, or like the next most important thing after this whole pandemic is climate change. We have to address climate change in the future eventually. So what my job currently does is try to lessen or engineer processes that lessen the impact of climate change. So as an environmental engineer for the government, I'm more towards the realm of compliance. So I have to make sure that they're not like polluting like crazy. There are no leaks or contaminants or spills that are happening on their sites. I have to make sure that their environment is protected to make sure that you know the government's not in trouble, doesn't get fined. And also because you don't want to like destroy this world. So I scrutinize the government, I make sure they're following the rules in order to protect the environment in the future. So for me personally, I think what I'm doing is like helping the environment, protecting people in the future. No, you can't really see directly that I'm saving lives just because I'm not like doing CPR or someone, or I'm not hooking someone up to a ventilator or something. But what I am doing indirectly is like stopping someone from dying from air pollution. I'm stopping them from drinking contaminated water or something like that. And it's hard to see and visualize that because, again, you're not seeing life and death happen before your eyes. But you will see that this problem has to be addressed sometimes in the future. So as an environmental engineer, you are addressing it right now, but no one is really seeing it just because you're more in the background, but you are still helping. And hopefully this is what you guys want to do too. You guys can see that in the foreseeable future that this climate change will be affecting the world more so than eventually this pandemic. But that's just my prediction. You don't have to follow it. You don't have to agree with it. That's just me. And lastly, the sixth reason why you should become an environmental engineer is that, well, even though it has a title as an engineer at the bottom, you do not have to have a professional engineer license. So again, looking at my stats, I have a master's in environmental engineering from a university. I have my engineering training certificate, but my work does not require that I have to have a professional engineer license. My work doesn't even require that I have to have an engineering training license. I can literally just graduate from school, graduate with whatever bachelor's or master's degree, and just work there. If you do become an engineer in training, and if you do get your professional engineering license, you will get paid more, you will have more credentials, you'll have more experience, you'll have more like prestige, people will be more likely to trust you, and you'll probably have an easier time getting hired, but it's not required for you to have a professional engineer license. You do not have to have these engineer certificate from the state in order to become an engineer. Again, there are a lot of good perks to having this, but it is not a requirement. Of course, I highly recommend that you strive to get that license at the end, but it's not a requirement. Even for me, I'm striving for it, but I don't have to do it. And even if I do get it, I don't know if my job will even give me a promotion or anything like that. If you ever want to switch over, it'd probably be easier just because you have that license. Now you're more flexible, now you're more like up there in the hierarchy rank. And it's always good to have more than you should, than less, that way you can be more flexible. But again, it's not a requirement. You don't have to have an engineering certificate to do whatever you want as an environment engineer. And so that was just my take on what it's like to become an environment engineer and why you should do it. In the foreseeable future, I do see that there would be eventually a potential need for it. Hopefully, if people are more likely to believe in science and so on because of this whole pandemic, 
hope that people will realize the need for scientific activity and that climate change will eventually be like a bigger issue than this pandemic or that other things are more associated with climate change and the impacts of it result in another crisis, like another maybe pandemic. But again, that's just my take. You don't have to agree with climate change or not. I just want you to see where I'm coming from. So yeah, if you like the honor, the prestige, the title, the attention, the money, the fact that you're helping people in the future, the fact that you're saving the world in the future, the fact that it's stable and the fact that it's flexible, then yeah, I would totally agree to becoming an environmental engineer. So hopefully this persuades you to become one too. I know that there's a lot of demanding fields out there. People are lost and confused as to what major to choose from. The environmental engineering field is always welcoming and I hope to see you guys pursue that field in the future. So hopefully you guys like the video and if you have any comments or questions or just any suggestions, maybe things that I missed out, just let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one.